Hello everyone, my name is Tristan from Plastic on Plastics. Today, we're gonna to be talking about microplastics. So what are microplastics? Microplastics are plastics that are less than five millimeters in diameter. When most people are talking about microplastics, they're usually referring to the ones found in the ocean. So let's start there. So a lot of people know there is a ton of plastic in the ocean. Uh, most famously, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, uh, which is twice the size of Texas, is a group of plastics basically just circulating um, in the Pacific Ocean. But there are many other garbage patches uh, throughout the world. Uh, no matter where you go in the world, you're probably going to find some sort of plastic. Um, and plastics have been found you know, at the very, very bottom of the ocean floor, which is just absolutely crazy when you think about it. Now, these plastics, uh, often large, will break down and degrade over time. Of course, that takes hundreds of years, maybe even thousands of years, but these plastics, as they break down, as they chip away on one another, uh, they get smaller and smaller, and that's when you have things like microplastics. So why are microplastics a problem? Well, microplastics are a problem because there is so many of them. Yeah, boys, they're puny. Hmm, puny? Say, let's pretend this grain is a puny little ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> nope. Oh, how about this? As you can probably imagine, if you were to pick up a water bottle out of the ocean and throw it in the trash, you would have, you know, solved that one piece of uh, garbage. You would have solved that little issue. But if that bottle breaks down into, let's say, 10,000 pieces, that's gonna be a lot harder to clean up. Now, because plastic is a porous material, plastic is able to soak up different chemicals um, and different disinfectants and different pesticides from rivers, uh, when they're still on land and also in the ocean. So these plastics, for example, a plastic container that might have Windex or any other type of chemical in it, can't absorb some of those chemicals, right? And so if that lands into a river and collects more chemicals in the river, uh, maybe there's pesticide runoff from farming, right? It's soaking up those pesticides, those chemicals, and then transporting these chemicals now into the ocean. So not only is the plastic itself, like the, the BPA in the plastic or whatever materials, whatever additives are in the plastic is a problem, but the other chemicals that the plastic soak up is also a problem. Now, microplastics are then confused by fish, um, by other animals and things like plankton as food. And so when these animals eat the microplastics, the plastics go into their bodies. Now, some of these plastics are really small. Uh, when you think of five millimeters in diameter, that's actually not that small when we're talking about, you know, the, the grand scheme, or I should say the, the micro scheme of things. But a microplastic is anything that's smaller than that. So there are a lot of plastics that are, you know, pretty much microscopic that zooplankton and other plankton will just soak up or take up uh, naturally with so much plastic being in the environment. And what happens is when a larger animal, like a whale or a tuna or some fish, uh, are eating one another and it goes up the food chain, all of this plastic starts to condense. And the larger the animal or the higher on the food chain, you're gonna have an animal with a lot more plastic in it. The next topic then is, are these plastics harmful to fish or, or other animals? So to address this problem, we have to think about if this plastic is kind of entering their other systems, right? So if you were to eat a plastic piece, like let's say you accidentally eat a, a pen cap, right? There's a high chance that it's gonna stay in your stomach or it's gonna be like pooped out. And therefore the risk of that pen cap is kind of gone. However, if you were gonna break that pen cap down into very small pieces and then eat it over and over and over again, then you might start to see effects within your own body because now you're constantly having a plastic within its digestive tract. So it's the same thing with fish. Now when a fish eats a microplastic, something that's let's say four millimeters in diameter, most of those chemicals are just gonna run straight through the digestive tract and it's not really gonna be that harmful for the fish. But microplastics isn't the smallest form or the smallest term of plastics. There's also something smaller called nanoplastics and these are derived from the microplastics. Now these nanoplastics are where things get a little more complicated because nanoplastics are like microscopic plastics. And these plastics can actually enter the bloodstream and enter, you know, or exit the intestine, whether it's the small or large intestine of different animals and into the bloodstream, into the lungs, into the heart, into the liver and go all around the body. Now, when these microplastics are within the digestive tract uh, for a long period of time, as well as now you have nanoplastics from those microplastics entering the bloodstream, then this is when we're starting to see problems. All sorts of problems that you would suggest with foreign chemicals in the body, um, hormonal imbalances, 
growth being uh, stunted, right? Different types of behaviors you're seeing, also uh, different cancers and stuff like that. So all these different weird genetic uh, issues, uh, many of them can be attributed back to the chemicals, often unknown, right? Um, that are in the body of these, of these animals. Now, when we eat this fish, the same thing happens. So even if you cut a piece of salmon filet, right? And you don't see any plastic in the, in the meat, uh, the meat could still have some of these chemicals and the, just these hormonal imbalances, right? And therefore the fish that we're eating today is nowhere near as healthy as the fish that you would have gotten, you know, a hundred years ago or 200 years ago, because there is so much microplastics and nanoplastics present in marine life. For humans, there is a lot of debate amongst the scientific community of how much this is uh, taking a toll on our health, right? Um, because we use plastics for water bottles and stuff like that too. So how much of the harm is coming from, you know, fish or microplastics from stuff we eat and how much is coming from, you know, leaching uh, into foods from the plastic containers that we use, right? So there's kind of this debate. Um, for most people, uh, it's found that I think over 90% of people have BPA tracing in their urine. So a large amount of people have plastic within their body. Um, and most people don't see any real negative side effects. So that's kind of a little bit of hope you could say, but definitely not something that we should be striving for. And the reduction of plastics, both in our environments and microplastics in our bodies is something that uh, needs to be addressed. So I know it might kind of be odd for a plastic company like us, Plastic on Plastics, to make a doomsday video on microplastics, but it is a topic that we think that we do need to address. And the reason why we are making this video is because Plastic on Plastics uh, specializes in making products out of waste stream materials and ocean plastic materials. So we really want other companies to see that making new products and their products out of uh, plastics that are ocean plastics is a viable uh, way to make products and a viable business plan. So if you are a company looking to make products, please contact us and we can let you know if making your product out of an ocean plastic is viable. And therefore we can create, you know, over time a demand for these less, less desirable plastics um, and, and help clean up our oceans and environment. Please let us know if this video was useful. Uh, subscribe, comment, and like this video. It helps us out a lot. Take care.